Pause up, everyone. Welcome to Meow Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore. This show is brought to you each and every Wednesday by the Cat Fancier Association. And a big pause and applause to our special sponsor, Kitty Raid, the maker of these isotonic drinks that help kitties get hydrated. But wait, there's a yummy raid. What? And for all of you that may have a DOG in your house, Doggy Raid. I'm telling you, if they have, uh, kitties aren't big water drinkers. And these have probiotics and taurine and all this good stuff. So I hope you will check them out. We're going to give away a packet later today. Uh, I want to also acknowledge, um, I can't do this show without my co-host. Let's give it up for all breed CFA judge, Kathy Black, with Doggy Designee, Destiny, who's smaller than Casey. And my other host is up there, the Rusty the Performer. And he's near my camera light right now. So we'll see if we'll have some fun later today. Um, I am so excited because we have a triple treat for you all. And thank you all for coming into Meowie Hour today. These people are here to make your cats perfect. And what do I mean by that? Because they know cat behavior quite well. So in any order, let me just do it so I see the first one. I want at first to have everybody please welcome back to the show, Pam Johnson Bennett. Hey, Pam, welcome Hi. to the show. And you know her. She is the founder of Cat Behavior Associates. We're going to share that link. She's written a lot of breakthrough books on cat behavior and good news, not news, good news. She is going to talk about her updated edition of Cat versus Cat. So thanks. Uh, Pam for coming back on the show. Oh, my pleasure. This is always fun. And next up, the lady who always has different hair colors to keep me guessing, keep me on my toes. She has many skills. We're talking about Tabitha uh, Cursera. Hey, hi, Tabitha. Hi. <laughs> so Tabitha's got new muse too, because in addition to her very popular uh, Cherubs and Chatter site, she, like me, is big into the fear-free pet uh, uh, messages about reducing fear, anxiety, and stress. But guess what? She just launched a podcast. It's called Tales from a Vet Tech Podcast. So I hope you all will tune in. Tabitha, thanks for coming back. Thank you for having me. And I love all your puns. I cannot get enough of them. <laughs> Talk to my family, will you? <laughs> It was since diaper days. It, I have to be my true voice. But yes. uh, anyway, and I really, really cherish our third and final guest. We're talking Stacey LeBaron. She has revolutionized the world for cats, especially community cats. She is the host of Community Cats Podcast and kind of a mastermind behind a number of online conferences we hope you will attend, including one coming up April 9th called the Online Behavior Day. And it has three of us, four of us here, and a couple more coming next week. So Stacy, welcome back to Meowie Hour. Thank you, Arden. Thank you so much for having me. All right. We did I do it? Did I show my manners? Did I get everything right? Okay. Well, if my brain's a little wobbly, I'm so glad Casey's here, and I'm so glad Casey and I have been together since I adopted him in April of 2014. So good news for all of us that have a cat, a dog, yes, destiny, rabbit, whatever. If you have had a pet and you have hung out with this pet and you have a nice relationship for at least five years, there is a new study that says that pets can boost your brain power. Kathy, please show that picture. <laughs> so the bottom line is uh, we got some Einsteins who are also sort of like our um, personal um, therapist, if you will. And the study, it, it actually uh, analyzed the cognitive function of about 1,300 adults, 50 years and older. 
And they found out that hanging out with a cat, a dog, or whatever, that it is actually beneficial to your working verbal memory. So any of you doing Wordle right now, do it while you're petting your cat. You might get it in three instead of five times. I always do it with an animal on my lap. So do many of you do Wordle? That the I five letter four name. different Wordles. I have not played it, surprisingly. <laughs> and I do crossword puzzles with Casey next to me. Mm-hmm. I swear telepathically he's saying, no, Arden, the answer is do, 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 do. I How go, do you have time? <laughs> <laughs> I find the time. My last name's Moore. That's what I do. <laughs> um, all right. But the study said that it also helps delay cognitive um, decline. Now, I, I don't know. We've got somebody here, a vet tech in the house, who kind of checks out studies a lot. And we're going to go to each one of you. What's your thoughts about how pets do a brain a good? We know that they make us smile and they help us with our um, good, feel good hormones. But what's your thought about them delving in deeper about? I haven't read that specific study and I'm totally going to nerd out and read it later tonight. So I will check that out. But we have a lot of research and studies. And then, of course, our own experiences that I think the bonds between our animals make us not just a better person. Like you said, they help us relax. Yeah. Um, they help us focus. And I think that definitely helps cognitively because if you're more focused and relaxed, you're more likely to be happier and be able to focus better. And again, the, I haven't read that study, but I'm excited to check it out. But we all know, guys, animals make us better people. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. I don't need the research. But it helps. I like research. <laughs> I, I agree, Tabitha. And and Pam, you've been sort of one of the trailblazers in the field of, of feline behavior. And you're still only 30. That's what I love. Your age. Oh no, I'm I'm loving this cognitive stuff with cats because maybe you know, keep me <laughs> aware a little bit longer. You're still but, sharp. You're still sharp, Pam. <laughs> well, I wonder two things. One is I wonder if some of it has to do with being needed you know, especially people who live alone, it, it, you're needed. You, you really have to stay on top of things. And yeah. so it keeps that relationship, you know, being needed is so vital to our mental and emotional health. The other thing is, I wonder if a few years from now, they're going to find out from a study that we have a negative effect on our cat's cognitive ability, you know, because of <laughs> how many mistakes we make. So... <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a good point. And what's your take on this, uh, Stacey, even though you may not have seen the study, but I sort of like seeing more and more studies about the, the healing power, the, 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 the benefits medically, um, emotionally, that pets, even, and especially cats, they're, they're pretty quiet, but they work little quiet wonders on us. No, I mean, it's, it's wonderful and it's great. And it has been shown, you know, to really help us physically, stress reduction, all of those issues. I will say though, in some cases, I wouldn't think that would be the situation in the situation where I sometimes had cats wake me up in the middle of the night. And so there are some days where I felt like I was a little bit sleep deprived uh, <laughs> along with my children when they were young too. But that's so, when it pushes your brain better. So maybe there's, <gasps> there's a logical reason behind it. Exactly. They do say sometimes a little stress is good. It's like a little bit is good, but not too much, you know, not too little. You don't want to be complacent, but so you like a little variety, but not too much variety because then that becomes overwhelming. So maybe yeah. cats know just the perfect level of where true, to Casey? push us. Let me, let me interview him. All right, Casey, for the record. <laughs> yeah. He goes, oh yeah. I will say this. Casey is a certified therapy pet and he seems to know how to read the energy in a room. So when we're a bunch of crazy kids at the critter camp at the SPCA, he's pretty playful and fun. But when we go to see our buddies, we call them the Brookdale buddies at the memory care center, he's very quiet, moves slower. He wears a cowboy hat, comes in on a stroller. And I remember um, the third visit we went there, one lady, Peggy, wasn't talking to anybody, hadn't for any, for a number of years. And the third visit, she screamed Peggy loves Casey, Peggy loves Casey, Peggy loves Casey. And Casey went, no, no. 
<laughs> like, I know. And I put Casey on her lap and he had really soft eyes and she just smiled. And I'm just saying, I, I, I think we are, all of us, all of you listeners, watchers here on Meowie Hour, be good to your cat because they're being darn good to you. All right. So I just wanted to share that study. What do you guys think? No, I love that. I think animals make all of us better and they're so good at assessing our body language. We all say, how did my cat know I was sad? They're on my couch hanging out with me as I sob because everyone has bad days, you guys. It's okay. Um, and a lot of that is because they assess our body language and it's really important for us to assess and respect theirs too. And I'm sure me and Pam can nerd out about that forever, but <laughs> Yeah. So that's why, that's why we owe it to them yes. to learn about behavior, learn about body language to, because they really are masters at communication, but we're not, you know, we're right. such a verbal species that we miss so much. So because of, of how much they give us and, and how amazing they are and how tolerant they are, we really owe them in terms of making sure we learn about their needs as cats and their behavior and their communication. And I behavior totally day agree. is just a start, but it's, yeah. you know, it's long overdue, these things. I agree. And I noticed that the sun is setting here. So Casey looks like he's got a halo of Jesus on him. So um, when we get to the part where we announce who won the prize, I'm going to sneak away for a second to fix the uh, um, <laughs> dog. So last week I asked uh, the question, um, hairball, yuck. What is the scientific name for hairball? I went easy on y'all. So I gave you some choices. I will mangle the pronunciation. Was it A, cosidosis, B, cystitis, C, pyrometra? None of these are fun for cats. Or D, uh, trabezor. And the answer, everybody? D. <laughs> Look at that bright bunch, bright bunch. So <laughs> Kathy, um, tell us who won. Uh, it was uh, some Meowie Wana items and kitty <laughs> raid. Okay, so Diana Knott, who is watching us right now. Hi, Diana. She won the kitty raid samples. Uh, Diana, they've been shipped, so you should be getting those later on this week or maybe early next week. And Jamie Brehob was the winner of the Meowie Wana uh, Crunchy Treats. And Jamie, I mailed that today. So you should have that next week around Monday or so. So congratulations to Diana and to Jamie. All right. Well, um, Rusty, the performer, decided to pop in and he said, I, can I ask the trivia question? Okay, that's cool. So the winner is going to get a three pack of the Kitty Raid products. Thank you again. So here, this is like the silliest question I've ever asked. We should have a lot of right answers. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. Here comes the questions, everybody. Don't look at Arden, just look at me. She's not talking. Okay, as a show of friendship, some cats will groom other cats in their household and even their favorite humans. What's the term for this? Is it called A, aloe grooming, B, cat o grooming, C, pal o grooming, D, Tabio grooming. <laughs> Come on, that's easy. Is it aloe grooming? Don't answer you guys. Aloe grooming, cattle grooming, palo grooming, or tabio grooming? I wrote this question sober. <laughs> so Hard to believe. To <laughs> Wait a minute, Wait a minute. Rusty's going to answer. What do you think? You can, you can answer. That's it, Rusty. Question. Rusty got the right answer, smarty pants. You can All right. the text box on Facebook, but I need you to email me. Sorry, we only ship domestically. We have a viewer from Malaysia tonight. So hello to Malaysia. Uh, my email is kathy.black at yahoo.com. It's in my name on the Zoom box. So send your answer to my email, but you can also type your answer on the chat of the Facebook Live. Those of you that are watching us on YouTube, you can also send me your response. I don't pick the winner until Sunday afternoon. So you have the rest of this week and the weekend before I mean this week it was Monday before I got to it. So anyway, type your answer. Everyone is in the running for the lovely kitty raid, unless you're outside the United States. 
Sorry. Casey says, see. I really love it. I do, I do kitty raid shots. They're great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving forward. Everybody, mark your calendar, April 9th. It's going to be here before you know it. And why? Because you love your cats. You want to learn more. You want to understand why they do what they do. Well, we have a big treat for you because April 9th is an all day dedicated to cat behavior. It is called the Online Behavior Day. It is presented by the Community Cats Podcast. And before I blah, blah, blah about everybody's topic, Stacy, give us an overview because she's the genius behind this. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Arden. So yeah, so at the Community Cats podcast, we run a lot of online events. And on April 9th, it's going to be Online Behavior Day. Um, and it's such a critical, critical topic for everybody. I don't know anybody that hasn't needed support with regards to behavior for themselves, as Pam talked about. It has a lot to do with us, less the cat, but it also has to do with the cat and with us understanding cats and and Pam is my hero. Um, I understood about feline behavior back in the 90s when I was running a very small shelter that had just started up. And she was my friend with the various books that she wrote back then. And I would buy books wow. for people, Pam's books, and hand them out, folks that wanted to surrender their cats. And they were like, I'm at Woodson, I can't do it. I'm like, here, have Pam's book, you know, right. and this is going to help you and, and that kind of thing. And then, you know, from there, folks like Tabitha and Rachel Geller, you, Arden, have joined the crowd, and we have this incredible lineup of four phenomenal speakers at Online Behavior Day on April 9th, and I just, I can't wait, and it's a fun party. We do it online. We have cat trivia during the day. We do poll questions. I get to know the audience, and it's as interactive as you can possibly be in a virtual environment. And so if they go to communitycatspodcast.com, they can write on the homepage, right? Get the details on how to register? Yep, they can. And actually, up until um, the 9th of March, we have a reduced uh, fee. So there is a fee for the day. It's $20 now. And then after March 9th, it goes up to $25 for registration. That's that's a bargain. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 a bargain. that's, that's a, about a box of a large litter box. Litter, right? Right. Or, or some cat food. So think about that and what it's it's going to reap in dividends, right? And all the sessions are recorded and the recordings are available for until the end of the year for folks to watch the recordings too. Okay, so we have two of the speakers as my guests. I, I is one of the speakers too, but I'm going to talk to them. <laughs> my talk is going to be about um, mealtime mayhem. So any of you that got crazy cats at mealtime, that's what my session is going to be about. And it's going to be from the behavior and the medical. And because I'm a first aid instructor, safety. So that's that's mine in a nutshell. I did that pretty quick, didn't I, Stacy? Okay, cool. Yeah. But let's start with Pam. Pam Johnson Bennett, guys. You really, I mean, if you don't know her now, you should check her out because she has been my hero for many years. And she has saved the lives of many cats. And she has made people have aha moments when it comes to understanding their feline friend. And Pam, I'm really excited because your topic is one really timely. Most of the folks tuning in to Meowie Hour have more than one cat. So your talk is going to be Turf Wars, keeping the peace with multiple cats in a household. Like you, troublemaker, Rusty. <laughs> So, Pam, you want to share a little bit of, uh, about what your talk will be about without giving away the whole kitten caboodle? Sure. Kitten caboodle. <laughs> <laughs> the puns never stop. Uh, <laughs> when you have one cat, everything belongs to that cat. But as soon as you add a second cat, all the negotiations begin. And oh. it starts, things go wrong from the very beginning because... So many people don't know how to do cat introductions. They assume we'll just put them together. They'll be instant friends or they do the wrong kind. They punish because the resident cat is not being friendly. So they make so many mistakes from the beginning. And then there are also cat parents who are living long-term with multi-cat households where their stress, maybe not necessarily, it seems overt, but it's kind of under the radar, but it's still very stressful. So 
my talk is going to be how to do the proper introduction, how to deal with the multi-cat environment, you know, the territory, the communication, no matter how long you've been living with it. Because I come across in my consultations so many people who say, well, they've lived together for 10 years. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, there no. is something you can do about it. And just because you don't see the fur flying and, and hear, you know, screeching and see actual fights doesn't mean there isn't tremendous stress going on. So that's what I'm going to cover because the rules really change when it's more than one cat. And when you're doing this talk, there's, there's behavior and health consequences, right? Yeah, stress, first of all, can cause all kinds of uh, medical issues and physical issues. Cats are very vulnerable to stress, so we don't want to live that way. Plus, there are medical reasons why cats may be showing a change in behavior, why longtime companions may suddenly not get along. It's the talk is going to be looking for what clues, you know, giving you some general guidelines and how to set up all aspects of the territory to set your cats up for success. Because we make the mistake of assuming cats are solitary and they're not. Cats are solitary hunters, but they're social animals, but their social structure is centered around resource availability. And we make a whole bunch of mistakes there. So hopefully when you watch it, you'll, you'll come away with, like you said, some aha moments that sometimes even small things can make a huge difference in how your cats get along. Now, I'm already ready to go jump in that talk, aren't you guys? Well stated, well stated, young lady. See, Thank you. you. Oh, young lady. Oh, I love it. And See, gonna... the cat thing, the cognitive. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, please, guys, go to catbehaviorassociates.com after the show. Look at all the things that she does. We're going to talk a little bit about her books in a little bit. But let's now shift gears to Tabitha. And Tabitha, your talk, I love this because a lot of the folks that tune in, really can benefit. And by the way, just like uh, Pam, uh, uh, there's a lot of, you know, Vanna White initials after your name. You're, you're a vet tech, um, you know, you're certified in cat behavior, blah, 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 blah. She knows cats. That's the topic. Like learning, I keep learning, behavior is yeah. my dream. <laughs> so her, her topic for April 9th is going to be called a fear-free shelter plan for cat comfort. So you want to give us a little overview, Tabitha? And thanks again for being on the show. No, of course. I'm stoked. And I'm stoked about this event and getting education out there and more accessible, which is why I always work with, with Stacey, because I think, I know me and Pam create a lot of free content, guys, uh, yeah, <laughs> to help make the world a better place for cats. But Stacey also works really hard to help make this education more accessible because we want it to be available to all, and that is a steal. So highly recommend everyone attending. And my lecture is all about planning for cat comfort at a in a cat shelter, but I'm gonna talk about a lot of things that you could probably use at home as well, because sometimes I work with a lot of shelters and veterinary clinics who say, this is a stressful environment. There just isn't much we can do. And the good news is, actually, there's a lot you can do that's very affordable, low cost, and things you could do to set up the cat's environment to decrease stress. Okay. And like we were talking about, less stress means the cats get adopted sooner. They're more likely to stay in that home because that's the goal. And also there's less risk for disease. So we see less respiratory infections. That's all those, really yeah. Yeah, because stress, guys, stress makes, if I'm really stressed, I'm more prone to getting sick. This is very true for our feline friends. So um, I'll talk about, special considerations for fearful cats because we do, there are things that we should do additionally if an animal, a cat is showing us signs of fear. There are ways we can make that environment more comfortable for them. And then meeting the needs of senior cats and cats with disabilities, because yeah. I think in the shelter setting and at home, there's cats of all histories who they may be declawed or they may have other injuries where using the litter box, that routine box that they sell in the pet store might not be best for them. And then I'm also gonna talk about tips on medication because I do cooperative care with cats. So my cats are, I cue my cats, I say meds, they come, I medicate them. 
It is not stressful at all. And it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to touch a little bit on that too. So you just, of- just became an angel to everybody who's like, oh no, I have to give my cat medicine. You, you just, you made it up. It doesn't have to be stressful yeah. for us or for them. Cause obviously I think it, it's hard for us too. And a lot of cats don't go to the vet, aren't getting the medical treatment they need because of the amount of stress. And we are here to help guys. Doesn't have to be that way. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Tabitha. And tell us a little bit about what you've been up to, Stacy, because um, you're kind of coordinating uh, the opening remarks and the whole shebang. I don't know, you know, when you sleep because you seem to be always uh, getting another um, conference together or alliance. You host the show Community Cats podcast, um, and you just got done with the United Spay Alliance Conference. Can you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So last weekend was all things about spay neuter, um, veterinary burnout, vet tech burnout, the veterinary shortage, looking at solutions on how to build up capacity in our clinics, working with private veterinarians to expand capacity, how to create a work environment that is more supportive, work life balance, which sometimes I don't really like using that terminology, but we all use it. So sort of put that out there. So yeah, all all last weekend, it was the United Spay Alliance online conference. And um, we do it in partnership with the United Spay Alliance, Community Cats podcast. And it's really, you know, if there's somebody out there that needs access to low cost spay neuter services, I don't want it to be hard for them to find it, to find those resources, wherever they might be. In the United States or around the world. We had videos from India, from Japan, um, from Italy. Uh, we had a, from Greece, I mean, Mexico, Panama, you name it. We pretty much had it covered in terms uh-huh. of different countries talking about the different spay neuter programs that they were doing. So, yes, I was all about spay neuter um, last weekend, which was really great and fun. And for those of you who don't know, the organization I used to run, the uh, Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society, we started a cat mobile. And so, you know, I was talking with a person with a mobile spay neuter clinic and we should all meet in Oklahoma and have like this big love in with all the mobile clinics, sort of like a family <laughs> reunion <laughs> with the RV. Candy lives know? in Oklahoma, <laughs> she'll come, she'll bring us coffee. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, but then we need the repair trucks to follow the mobile <laughs> clinics for when they break down. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, that's true. Hey, anyway, um, also this Saturday, March 5th, you have your trap neuter, is it TNR, is it TNR? Is yep. it TVCNR? Yep. Uh, trap neuter return. Trap neuter return, right. You can say TNVR, trap neuter vaccine. I just feel like return. I have to eat can... alphabet soup when I say TNR, TNR. Uh, yeah, there's, there's TNR, TNVR, TNRM. You can put that too. You can tip on the right. You can tip on the left. You can, well, you tip on the, most people tip on the left, but the West Coast tips on the right. There's one place I know that they tip the the community cats with a with a notch. They do a notch still. So anyway, I won't digress on that. But we have our Trapper Certifications Workshop, which is this Saturday. It's always the first Saturday of the month. Uh, it's a two and a half hour session. If you're thinking at all about turning your passion for cats into action, getting out there and helping cats in your community, and you're thinking that you want to help with trapping cats to be able to bring them into a clinic to get them spayed and neutered, you don't want to do that without getting some training ahead of time. A lot of people have learned some lessons the hard way, and unfortunately, the cats have suffered because of it too. So this is two and a half hours of intense training on how to set a trap, how to bait it properly, how to get a cat trap safely, prepare it for the vet, and you get do a little test at the end and you get a certificate. And there's some organizations that give you a discount in your community. If you're certified, you get priority on that reservations yes, or free great. rental. So communitycatspodcast.com. We have a podcast every week. You can join, you can subscribe to the podcast. I just recorded 463 episodes. I mean, the in one day. Yes, I wish I could. <laughs> 463rd episode today. So mm-hmm. it, it's, uh, it's getting up there, but anyway, so, but. Well, the last then, thing I want to ask you about is you yep. had, you said something about their, Petco has a love vaccine campaign for the whole month yeah. of March. What's this all about? So Petco Love, which I think some folks might have known as Petco Foundation, they have designated the month of March as like vaccination month. And they have this goal to distribute hundreds of thousands of vaccines, um, out that there's a grant program. So if you are part of an organization, part of a nonprofit, 
um, you can sign up to receive some vaccines as well as a stipend. So I'd recommend you look into that because that gets you sort of in with the foundation. I do a lot of grant writing for a lot of organizations and help them with a lot of funding. And this is a good way to get yourself in the door with a foundation. And so you kind of get to know them. Um, if you're an individual, you can keep a lookout. They have a list of where the uh, vaccine clinics are being held in March and hopefully they have one in your community and you can take advantage of it if, if you're looking for um, some affordable vaccines come springtime, which I know a lot of folks are looking for. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, it's, it's what, <laughs> And for for uh, for dogs, it's, you know, licensing season too. So yeah, a lot of people true. try to get it done before their license or do. Good. And Kathy, I know we've been blah, 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 but we've had a lot of great things shared by our trio. Um, if any of you listening, watching, have a question, Kathy will break, break through with a question, okay? Um, but we do want, to ask, uh, I want to tell you a little bit more about Pam Johnson Bennett. I always want to call you Pam Bennett Johnson, then you could be PBJ, <laughs> which is one of my favorite sandwiches. <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll change it. <laughs> you know, all my forms. Thanks, Harden. No, I, I would not make you do that. But she's very humble, but she is, um, she really knows CAT. And I got to tell you guys, she's the vice, she was the vice president of the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants. I loved you on the Animal Planet uh, UK series, Psycho Kitty. That's a great name. You got to watch that. Um, she has written more than eight books, best-selling books. Um, I love that um, you are on a lot of boards, advisory boards to help the cat being their advocate. Um, but uh Think like a cat. I have that book. And it is, as it's been said, it's like the cat Bible. So um, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about what you're up to now. And in 2020, while we're all sequestered at home, tell us what you did to a book that was uh, a pretty big uh, bestseller. Well, uh, years ago, I wrote Cat versus Cat because there wasn't anything for multi-cat owners, even just having two cats. Wow. And I recently, a couple of years ago, did the updated and expanded version because our knowledge just keeps changing. And, you know, sometimes you look back at older books and you think, oh my gosh, you know, I really said that. So <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I look back and say, I really dated that. <laughs> <laughs> so we know so much more and, uh, so that's why I did that. And it is a guide to whether you're just thinking about getting a second cat, because you know, a lot of cat parents, they're terrified to do a new cat introduction because they hear such horror stories yeah. you know, or they're under the belief that cats are solitary. So I wanted it to be a guide so that it's almost as if I'm standing there in the room with you going, okay, here's the next step. Here's the next step. And then there are some, I, like I would love to have a Pam uh, <laughs> in my pocket, you know, because we just, brought oh, in I, a I can get to be pretty naggy though. I think there you, know, you get tired of me quickly, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but it's also living so many times I'd go to consultations and people have lived with multi-cat issues for so long because they didn't know how to change it. And everybody suffers, you know, obviously the cat suffers, but it changes the family dynamic. It changes the happiness in the family because nobody Not adopts true. or rescues a second or third or fourth, fifth cat, you know, to have them hide under the bed or attack the other cat. You know, you want a relationship, you want everybody to be happy. So that's an important cause for me is understanding the the multi-cat environment and helping people whether they're just thinking about it or whether they've I like it. pretty much given up about it and I also wanted to say something too and, and reference Tabitha for this behavior day uh, with multi-cats even if you're not having a problem you're going to learn things that will enrich your cat's life and with Tabitha when, when she was mentioning about medicating yeah. You may have this perfect little kitten and you're not even thinking about the fact that at some point that cat may need ear medication, may need to be pilled, may need something, you know, that the cat isn't always going to stay healthy. So think ahead, you know, do let's do our training and our preparation ahead so that we can avoid a lot of behavior problems. 
So don't think that you don't need these things just because, well, I'm not having any behavior problem. I don't need to worry about this. You know, you're going to pick up something that will enrich your cat's life and you might be able to avoid behavior problems. And lastly, we want to also let people know that uh, you are the spokesperson for Arm and Hammer's Cat Litter Unsung Heroes Award. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Arm and Hammer has for the past few years been doing a lot of projects. Um, the imperfect cats, you know, the perfectly imperfect, trying to raise awareness for cats who are overlooked at shelters because of age or appearance or behavior issues. And then this past year, we spotlighted the the people who work in shelters who come up with the most amazing things to help these cats. So uh, I'm just so happy to be associated with them. And every time an older cat or a cat who has some kind of you know disability or a cat who was basically written off because of a behavior problem, every time those cats get adopted, it's just, it, it, it's the reason you do this. Can I share a little thing? We have big news. Um, about three weeks ago, we brought in an 11 year old community cat named Baxter, who is a fluffy uh, tuxedo. And we have him in uh, our spare bedroom, but we have a gate that he can walk in through and out. We have the feel away. Uh, we are being respectful of him, but he's always been on our porch for the last four or five years with his face and paws planted with the cats on the other side, including Casey. Can I just come in? Can I, can I just come in? And we realized he's getting older and he's sleeping in the middle of the street. And we've been feeding him every day, twice a day. And he has his little condo on our porch, but we realized somebody else or others have been feeding him because he suddenly became like this. And he's 16 pounds, three ounces. And I, I can say I'm big boned, but, um, come on. So I'm happy to say he's transitioning well, slow and easy. He's coming out through the little gate and he loves dogs. And our two dogs love cats. So they're like, oh my God, Baxter's, Baxter's in the house. Can I sniff your butt? Baxter goes, yes. And it's working out really well. But I was realizing sometimes he's a little grumpy and we did all the panels. He has no kitty cooties. And he goes Friday because he has only one canine tooth. Mm. The others are gone or broken off, you know, the catching teeth. And I think when he comes back from his doggy, his dental visit with that healthy, healthy mouth, I'm going to hope he's going to even blossom more. But what Very a wonderful, easy. what a wonderful gift of, of love that you're giving. And he's going to give back so much. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, that just, oh my gosh, that anymore. just, that, that, that makes me so I wanted to enjoy that because he's a good boy and he has a soprano voice. So when he meows, he goes, hey! <laughs> we all say, hey, Baxter! And, he goes, hey! <laughs> and even this guy, he likes him. They slept on the bed together. With well, the door open. ears. <laughs> oh, sorry. 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 All right. Moving forward. I love what you do, Pam. You inspire me. Uh, Tabitha, let's talk about your new um, podcast. You are a veterinary technician. And um, let, let's talk about, um, it's called Tales, T-A-I-L-S, from a vet tech podcast. I had to do a little pun. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, I'm a, I'm that's a why you two buddy. get along so well. <laughs> that's a little one. So talk a little bit about, you know, I laugh because, all right, I have the longest running pet podcast on the planet. We first aired the OBA show on Pet Life Radio in 2007 using Skype and a prayer. And we, and we, nobody knew what a friggin' podcast was. Now, I think it's weird if you don't have one. I think I have a podcast and he hasn't told me yet. But um, I am so proud and happy because I think there is a void and getting to hear from vet techs, I think is really paramount. You guys are on the front line. So tell us what inspired you and can you tell us a little bit of how people can tune in? Yeah. So I started a podcast called Tales uh, from a Vet Tech. And <laughs> If you guys, I love talking. Um, I'm very extroverted. This is me without coffee. So it's great. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm all about when it comes to just animal professionals in general, whether, because I work with dogs too, so it could be 
an animal behavior consultant, a veterinary, a veterinarian, a veterinary technician, uh, people that work in shelters. And I see a lot of things because I work in all the worlds. Uh, a lot of those things are burnout, compassion fatigue, not advocating for yourself, not understanding how to advocate for your patients. Yeah. Um, and then again, everyone's care is is not as strong that way because we're not advocating for ourselves or our patients. So I was like, okay, how can I help? And I was like, I love talking. I love educating people. It's easily accessible. So I was like, let me start a podcast to help basically provide education, information, and a dialogue that will create like a supportive environment that's empowering yeah. um, for animal professionals because we got to be honest, y'all. I like communication and I'm good at it, but a lot of us animal people aren't necessarily people people, uh, which is okay, um, but I see a lot of toxicity, again, a lot of chronic issues in vet and shelter med. So I was like, let's support and uplift and empower each other. Let's learn from each other. Let's hear, like, I, guys, I have bad days. I have anxiety. It's cool. It's okay. <laughs> she changes like, the color of her hair every day. <laughs> it's it's my self care, which is important. Um, so basically, it's just helping to give a voice to people that may not be heard. And I'm also going to allow guests or people to call in or email in if they would prefer to be anonymous because. I don't want to talk about their story, but I could share their story and get their feelings out there. I'm going to be talking about everything from like my first episodes, all about establishing boundaries. Y'all, we need them to survive. Um, and then I'm talking about how you can be a veterinary technician and have a career. Like I love my job. I have quite a few. I don't work in general practice anymore. I work as a consultant and a lot of other things. And you can too, because you're amazing. Or if you're happy in general practice, that's awesome. But you should have a CE allowance and you should be empowered and be able to ask questions and all of these things. So we're going to be talking about the good, but also a little bit about the ugly uh, parts of shelter and vet med. So and how, how, do they, how do people tune in? We're, direct us. Oh yeah, that's important. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> available on anywhere you can listen to a podcast. I have a lovely producer, bless him, who does all that stuff. So uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I'm everywhere. The, the teaser just dropped and the first official episode is next Monday about boundaries. So definitely check it out for sure. So if you just uh, Google Tales from a Vet Tech, you'll be able to figure it out? Yes. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram, all the fun social things. <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure. All right. Um, Kathy, is there anything you want to interrupt us with or people listening? <laughs> Uh, no, I was able to answer a couple of questions. And we've had many people from Singapore, Belfast, also watching us tonight. So welcome. All oh, cool. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I, I love the international audience. Um, yes. Um, we're going to jump right now. You all stay right there. Um, at this time, um, I'm going to slip away because I'm going to put on my hat as a licensed bartender. Tonight's drink, as I promised, once a month, we are doing a mock tale alcohol free. For any of you that care to add alcohol, I can tell you when I do the drink what you can add. But at this time, I'm going to slip away for a minute while Kathy talks to you about a pretty cool breed, the Bombay. Take it away, Kathy. All right. So we are uh, coordinating our breed profiles on the alley hour with the advertising that CFA is doing profiling a breed each week. So this week is the Bombay breed. And this is an interesting breed of cat. It comes in one color, this patent leather black cat with these big copper penny eyes. And this breed was established back in 1960 um, something, I didn't put that in here, where a, um, a, a lady had an idea of making a cat that looked like a little baby panther. So she took her stable Burmese and she bred it to a black American short hair. And that combination produced this beautiful cat. And so we call this the patent leather kid with the copper penny eyes. That's our nickname for it. Uh, this breed was established um, for championship in 1976. So they've been around for several years. 
They described them as a combination of a dog, a cat, and a monkey, all rolled into one little mischievous package. Um, they said they can be leased, trained, and they are taught to fetch. Uh, they're very entertaining cats, very outgoing, very congenial, very affectionate. Um, and like, and it's just amazing. I saw a litter of Bombay babies and they had that black, shiny patent leather coat, even as little tiny newborn kittens, just amazing. So we're gonna look at some pictures of them. Obviously they only come in one color, black, but look at this beautiful shine to this coat. Uh, these cats have a very round head. Even the nose is rounded down. On the, on the end, giving the face uh, that true rounded appearance. They have these rounded eyes that are copper colored. Um, they have a medium sized body, but it's very muscular. The coat is close lying, so it's going to be very easy to care for. And they get breath across the chest when they get maturity. Uh, they have a very open, sweet expression. And of course, I just love these eyes. Uh, these are very sociable cats. Um, so here they are, like a couple of them hanging out. These people have put them in costumes. Uh, this one looks like it's trick-or-treating, maybe. It cleaned up, got lots of candy for the night. Um, they are very nice show cats. Um, there's a few breeders that are working with this breed, so they're a little bit difficult to find, but not impossible. Um, here's a litter of kittens all hanging out. So you can see even when they're very young, they still have that wonderful black patent leather shiny coat. Um, sweet cats, very, very playful, very lovable. Um, here's some exhibitors showing their cats. Um, Phoebe uh, lives in, um, I'm sorry, Phoebe, if I'm get, get this, gonna get this wrong. I think you're in Hong Kong. I could be wrong on that. Uh, wow. Here's some exhibitors from around the world with their beautiful cats. And look at this, just how patent leathery black shiny these cats are. They just really have a very beautiful coat. Get along with dogs, get along with children, get along with other cats. Uh, just a very interesting little breed of cat. So that's our story about the Bombay breed. Let's give it up for Kathy Black. She is an all breed CFA judge and a pretty cool person. And she shares her home with um, uh, cats and the doggy designee, Destiny, who's smaller than all your cats, right? Yes, yeah, about half, about half the, <laughs> half the weight of my cats. <laughs> if I only was twice as big. <laughs> yeah, she's the same size they are, they just outweigh her. My sure true have very nice big potato bodies, so. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna be one of those when I'm, I come back in my next life. Yeah, that's my body build. I'm like a fire hydrant. Hey. Um, <laughs> I do like the fact that the Cat Fancier Association recognizes all cats. I know there are 40 some breeds recognized, but there's a lot of cats like Casey and Rusty and I'm sure some of you all that um, we have no idea who the mommy, who their daddy are. We will never know. But I love the fact that CFA is champion all cats. So Kathy, tell us about the companion world um, uh, the Companion Cat World Program, CCW. Right. So this is a program that we started a couple of years ago. We have a competition level called Household Pets, but not mm -hmm. all cats want to be show cats, right? So we started this program to recognize all of the random bred cats or any of those that even they, they want to be a show cat or not, um, everybody is a companion cat. So we started this program called Companion Cat World. And I even have my little cat Lola registered here. You probably can't see her because it's going to. And this out. is Rusty and Casey. And when you upload their picture, then you get this lovely card. You can see it's a hard like a credit card. It's got their cat's name you. and your name is their human, and uh, their unique registration number. So even though you may not know the pedigree, you may not know the lineage of your cat, your cat can have a history. You Isn't that cool? CFA database. We've been around since 1906. And even cooler than that, 10%. Wait, there's more? Yes. 10% <laughs> of your one time fee of $13 goes to a local shelter in your region. So See? everybody check it out at cfa.org slash CCW. 
your cat's picture will go up on our gallery wall on our website. You can look at all the beautiful cats that have, have registered with us and you can get luggage tags or key yeah. rings. You can lock, do lots of extra stuff. So everybody <laughs> check that out at cfa.org slash ccw. What do you all think of that program? Isn't that nice? That's awesome. Who doesn't want more photos of their cats with them? Yeah. <laughs> but now your cat want can have their, shelter. And yeah. your cat can have their own luggage tag for the carrier. I know. When so she said that, I was cool. like, I really want that. <laughs> it is really cool to put that on your carrier so when it goes to the vet, the vet knows exactly whose crate it belongs to. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that. And when you go drinking at a bar with them, they have their own ID. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Hey, uh, moving on from the companion cat world, um, I, know, I know I'm a goofball, but one thing I'm very passionate about is keeping our cats and dogs safe. And I'm happy to say I'm entering year 12 as a master pet first aid instructor. And I have about 12 amazing veterinarians with really long letters after their name who are my advisors, including the past president of the American Academy of feline practitioners, Dr. Elizabeth Colloran. She's a great gal, Dr. Marty Becker, I can name them all. So I wanna show you this picture because I teach different levels. I teach a cat only first aid program for certification. I teach a cat and dog class. I actually next Monday and Tuesday are teaching eight hours each day for people to become instructors in pet first aid. And I'm sharing this photo. Check out this photo guys. I taught this class yesterday, last night, these happy faces with the most adorable felines are representing a nonprofit in Minneapolis. It's called the Bitty Kitty Brigade. And they really help some of the neonatals and orphan kittens. And I wanted to share that picture. What do you guys think of my latest class? I love it. It's awesome. I love it that everybody can see each other even though you're doing it via Zoom. Yeah, it's live, it's interactive. Casey and sometimes Rusty, when he's being a good boy, join me on the Zoom. And we show people as we show them, we show them practical ways to keep their kitties safe, how to do, we did three different ways of doing um, CPR and rescue breathing because we showed them how to do it on adult cats, on kittens that are about the size of your forearm, and on the neonatos that may have some fluids in their nasal area or their throat. So I was showing them three different techniques. What do you think, Vet Tech? I love that, more education for all. <laughs> and that also helps people appreciate, thank your veterinarian, thank your Vet Techs guys, thank your CSRs, customer yes. service, thank everybody. It might not seem like much, but it will make that person's day. Be kind to your veterinary professionals. Please. <laughs> I, um, I do. And I, I love my team at Casalina Animal Clinic in Dallas. I know the vet techs. I know the veterinarians. I know the front desk people. And they know you and your pet. So it isn't just Arden walking in. They know you. And I love that kind of care. And they go through a lot. So bless you for that. So I hope that you guys, let's show the other picture. Come on, look at my oh. teaching assistant. <laughs> my company is called Pet First Aid for You. So we've had a number of people from the Alley Hour take my class. Thank you, everyone. The $40 for three hours, you get a course book, you get handouts, you get my bad jokes. You get to spend three hours really learning what to do when uh-oh happens. Your emotional state, we incorporate some fear-free in there, definitely. But uh, I hope you can. We have our next cat-only class is I'm delicately balancing my drink as Rusty tries to come over um, is March 29th. It's a Thursday night, 5 to 8 p.m. Central Time. So will you please tell your friends because we can save cat lives together. I have the March 29th as a Tuesday night. Oh, Tuesday. Thank you. It's a Tuesday. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And the other thing is March 13th, I have opening still for the cat dog first aid class. And that's going to be in 11 to 3.30 Central Time. And my dog Kona helps me. So I, I do uh, tap my talents of my, my pets. They we work as a team. What do you guys think of that? I love teamwork. Right? Yeah. And the, and the cats are like, give me the grade A level treats, please. And I have trained my dog to pretend she is out for the count. I don't like the, the trick where they say, bang, bang, you're dead. 
Mm. I just say, Kona, and I do this with my head. And she lays down on the demo table and I'm clapping and stomping and saying, wake up, Kona, wake up. And she's not moving. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then uh, Casey, when I'm trying to do chest compression, he's purring like a Mack truck. I'm like, okay, I think I can hear he's alive. Okay, cool. He thinks well, you, you know. Yeah, he's, he loves it. He loves it. So please, guys, do something like that. It doesn't have to be my program, but I think learning first aid and safety is going to be some the best gift you can ever give your cat or dog. So thank you for all that. So shifting gears, because I do that very often. <laughs> uh, I could never do the elevator talk, what I do. Um, I love, uh, this is a drink, very refreshing. We're calling it the Miavolous Yummy Cat Mocktail. And there's, there's no need for alcohol with this a perfect um, variation of the classic mint julep. And big shout out to Teresa Kiger. She's an all breed cat judge and the editor of Cat Talk. Every week she creates these graphics for my drinks. Isn't that pretty? Ladies and gents. I really want one. I don't yeah. have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. so it's, it's one. Pretty, it's, this one's pretty easy. If you have one of those, uh, um, you know, Moscow Mule copper mugs, you can. But I'm doing just a, a, a rock glass. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And the secret is the muddle. So I have uh, a handful of fresh mint. Isn't that nice? And then I'm going to put a couple squirts in of a simple syrup. Guys, you can make it yourself. It's sugar and water boiled, just a hint. But I'm looking fancy here. So I'm going to squirt a little in here. And then I'm actually quartered um, a slice of lime. And the secret to a good fake mint julep, or the classic yummy meow, uh, mocktail, is the muddling action. Because you want the mint and the syrup and the lime to kind of have a little dance off. And when they have a little dance off, they're all feeling good and all the different flavors. You like that one? Nope, it doesn't have any whipped cream. Okay, then after you do that, um, you want to um, add some ice to the glass. So do this before you put ice in, all right? And because I like ginger beer, you can use ginger ale, but I like, of course, I'm a chick diet ginger beer. So you're going to put a little um, of ginger beer in there. And the key is to stir very slowly because it's carbonated. Whoop, wrong end. I haven't even started drinking. <laughs> wrong end. And uh, I like to add a couple more good fresh limes to the drink and rim the glass with another slice of lime. So we have mint and lime in the glass. So I ask you all at this time, whether you have a purebred, whether you have a, I don't know where you came from cat, can we all please just raise a glass and let us toast to all cats. They truly, truly make us smarter and better humans. Cheers, kitties. Cheers. Cheers. It's very refreshing. Now, for some of you that say, well, that's really nice, but I need a little boost, you can add about a shot and a half of vodka if you like. I'm perfectly happy with this. This is very refreshing. So anybody's thoughts? What do you think of my mocktail? I think I'm going to make that tomorrow. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love mint so much, and I love mojitos, and I was like, I've never heard of a mint julep. Yeah, and it, this is the perfect- I know. I'm not hip with drinks. I'm getting there, guys. <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. I, I, and as you all know, I have more fun making the drinks. I don't really drink drink. I don't get drunk. I don't want to get drunk. I just like the, the difference. It's working a different part of my brain than behavior and pet first aid. So my wife, Julie, is very happy because I have to try drinks out on her. She's okay. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not driving, right? Okay, good. Um, hey, we have had a wonderful time today. Um, I can't believe the hour has almost already passed. At, at this time, again, I want to thank the Cat Fancier Association for coming up with the idea of Meowie Hour every Wednesday night. Tell your friends. I really want to thank our sponsors, Kitty Raid. This is a game changer for kitties. Hang on, guys. It's a cat versus cat. Uh-oh, we need Pam. Um, 
<laughs> it's, a, it's a good drink to keep kitties hydrated. Check them out, please. They have one for dogs and one for cats and dogs called Yummy. I love you, Kathy Black. You're, you rock. You put up with me every Wednesday night. Uh, Destiny sleeping or in your lap? She's on the floor. Wow. And Casey and Rusty have left the table. I know. Um, so we're, we're, we're animal less. All that's all right. That's all right. Everybody give a big shout out to our wonderful guests, Pam Johnson Bennett, Tabitha Casera, and Stacy LeBaron. I thank you so much for being here and helping us understand cats. And That's next smart week, women. really smart. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are. It's and next cool. week, Stacy's back because we're going to do part two of the online behavior um, seminar. That's April 9th. and with us will be um, Dr. Rachel Geller and Kristen Petrie. Kristen, 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 Kristen Pe Petrie, and she's going to give us some cat trivia. So we're going to have our minds. So until next time. Please be good to your kitties. It'll be same cat time, same cat channel. We will see you on Meowie Hour. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.